Hi, this is Drew Jones of Drew's Guitar Shop in Seattle, Washington, and today I wanted to do a quick little video about orange drop capacitors and their preferred orientation in a circuit. What do I mean by preferred orientation, you might ask? Well, so if you take a look at this guy, it has two leads, and uh, in regards to the orientation, one of these works a little bit better if you go to ground with it, and the other uh, to uh, some kind of uh, hotter sort of lead uh, in the instrument. And uh, the reason for that is uh, that this was designed to have that particular orientation. Um, yeah, I know. Um, it's not something that's often talked about on guitar forums and stuff, so it's, uh, it's uh, one of those things that I learned um, a while back um, from a YouTube channel that I'll go ahead and link down below because uh, he's super cool and talks about a lot of electronic stuff. But anyway, um, those of you who uh, have worked with electrolytic capacitors might be familiar with, uh, you know, capacitors that might have an orientation um, where one side wants to go to the positive and one side wants to go to the negative. Um, you know, for very different reasons, these have a, these also have a preference. Um, incidentally, I'm just going to go ahead and put a little PSA out there. Um, if you use an electrolytic capacitor and you wire it inappropriately, that is, you wire the positive end to the negative and vice versa, uh, they have a tendency to explode like firecrackers and uh, to throw acid all over the place, including possibly into your eyes. Um, it's nasty. It's very dangerous, so don't do that. Um, the other thing that I'll say is that they're not really good for guitar work, so don't use them in your guitar. Um, they, they, they will not do good things. <laughs> so moving on, let's go ahead and uh, talk a little bit about how capacitors work in general. So... Capacitors that aren't electrolytic, this is the kind of, you know, cap that you would typically see in a guitar, like monolithic capacitors or uh, disc capacitors or orange drops or, you know, any of those kind that don't have, like, the battery acid in them work pretty much on the same principle, which is that you have, you know, a conductor and another conductor, and then in between these two conductors you have some stuff, some dielectric material is what we would call that um, because it is a non-conductive material. And so what happens is that as a charge builds up on one of these plates, um, eventually it will reach a point where it wants to jump this gap. And what that gives you is this part in the circuit that has kind of a pulse because it will build up, build up, build up, and then dump, and then build up and build up and build up and dump, and build up and build up and build up and dump. And as long as the voltage and the amperage uh, remain consistent, the rhythm at which it does that is going to uh, also remain consistent. And so this is also why we use capacitors as a filter in our tone, in our tone uh, uh, systems or our tone pots. That's why these work is because we're adjusting frequency and filtering it through this thing. So let's go ahead and talk about some different types. Um, oftentimes in um, you know instruments, unfortunately, what you'll see is these little guys, which on the inside look pretty much like this. Um, so basically, these leads both go into a plate. There's a little piece of some dielectric material in the middle. And uh, you know that's how it works, basically like how I showed you here. The problem with that is that um, this can be kind of a noisy thing to have in a circuit. There's not a lot of um, there's not a lot of protection from EM interference in this system here, and uh, there's also uh, kind of a potential that this kind of acts as a little bit of an antenna and kind of sucks in some EM frequencies that may be buzzing around the room. And so I uh, tend to prefer not to use these when I wire up an instrument. And I, um, I, you know, whenever I see one of these in an instrument, I, I oftentimes kind of want to pull it out, even if it's the even if it's the thing that was period correct or whatever, um, just because I don't think that they work as well. Something else that I'll say about these is that there is kind of a throw to capacitors, as in when you adjust your vol or adjust your tone knob the feel of it and just how much it cuts and where is also kind of dependent on what kind of cap you're using. There's going to be a different curve to that throw, if that makes sense to you. Um, it's difficult for me to illustrate that, so I'm not going to bother. But, you know, if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. So anyway, um, the difference between that little uh, plate capacitor and these guys is how they look inside is drastically different. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, draw one out for you. And uh, 
then I'll show one to you because I've got one here that's bisected. So on the one side, you've got a lead that just comes in, and it's basically just kind of a lead. It, it just kind of hangs out in there. But on the other side, you have a foil layer that is connected to a lead. Now, if you are familiar with the way that coaxial wire works in a circuit, one of these covers the other. That would be a ground shield if this side is connected to ground. This side would prefer to be hooked up to something that maybe is a little less ground. So, um, when considering, you know, what kind of um, what kind of orientation to put the to put the capacitor in, this is what we're talking about. This outer foil layer that's made to be kind of a, a protective shield layer over the rest of the capacitor, and kind of quiet things down. So I'm going to go ahead and show you um, one of these that I've bisected and uh, see if we can get the camera to focus. There we go. There's our lead. So that would be that portion there. You can see that little dot. And then on this side over here, you can see that foil. That's here and you can kind of play with it a little bit even. And then the rest of this stuff is our dielectric material. So, you know, this is a, this is a very very different design from a from a plate capacitor, um, and uh, this was designed to work in audio circuits for this reason. You'll find something similar to this if you open up an old foil and oil capacitor, like an old Bumblebee or a Black Beauty or something. Um, but the difference is just in the in the types of materials used. So anyway, um, let's kind of talk about like how I would wire one of these in. Um, I tend to prefer to make my electric, uh, you know, my, my wiring pretty modular when I go in. So I like kind of to wire the tone pot, wire the volume pot, and wire everything kind of separately. So we have our um, tone pot here. We have pin 1, pin 2, and pin 3. In a lot of cases what you'll see is that there's a capacitor stretched between pin 2 and your volume and the capacitor is living somewhere over here. But the way that I prefer to do it is I prefer to run a wire uh, from the same pin that you run your pickup into the uh, volume pot. Uh, so your volume pot is over here. So whichever pin your pickup is plugged into, that's the one that you want to plug this wire into it. And you plug it into the pin 2 of the uh, tone, capa or the tone uh, pot. And then what I'll do is I'll run the capacitor through this right here. And what I want when I hook this up is for this foil side to be the side that's connected here and for this other side to be the side that's connected with the pin. So is this starting to make a little bit more sense maybe? Alright. So how do you tell though? How do you tell? Because on the foil and oil capacitors oftentimes there's a line so you know when you look at those things there's going to be a side that has some little lines on it, and under that it'll say, you know, foil side, um, just so that the person wiring up the uh, circuit knows which way to plug it in so it acts like this. Well, um, there's a cool way to do it. And uh, this is a method that I sort of modified um, from a method that I saw used on another YouTube account that I'll go ahead and I'll link in the description because he's got a lot of really cool nerdy electronic stuff um, and he just knows a lot about what he's talking about so it's just cool to watch him even if you're not into electronics it's cool to watch people who are good at their work anyway um, we'll talk about how to uh, figure out that orientation so what I have here is a output jack um, that I have wired two leads with alligator clips to and uh, you may have seen this in some other videos of mine and uh, this is an awesome tool for doing a whole lot of diagnostic work, um, and it's also very useful for this particular task. Now, if you're very quiet, you might hear that I've got that amplifier turned up to the point where it's humming a lot. It's actually up at full volume. And I want it that way because I'm going to be listening for something very subtle here. When I touch this capacitor, I'm listening for a change. Does the hum get louder? Does it change? Okay, let's go ahead and switch sides. It's a good idea to pull the uh, hot off first, just because uh, that's going to be a little quieter for you. 
Now you hear that? So that loud difference that you're hearing there. That means that the outside foil edge is the side that's going to hot. Does that make sense? You're touching the hot lead, basically like when you do this. It's the same thing, and you don't get that if you touch the ground, because the ground's not the thing that it's pumping out the speaker. The hot is. So when you hear that volume change, you know that you have this backwards. So we'll go ahead and we'll uh, try reorienting these. And you hear how there's hardly any difference? That's the correct orientation. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to take that grounded side, that is the side that goes to the sleeve on this output jack, and we're just going to put, put a little line here, and that would be like our line on a foil and oil cap. And I also like to kind of come over here and put a little ground symbol. Probably no one is going to see it, except for like another repair guy maybe. But, you know, if they do, there it is. But that's how I determine the orientation of uh, an orange drop capacitor before I install it in a guitar. And uh, again, this is my preferred method for doing it. Um, this stuff over here, what I mean by kind of a hotter side, this stuff over here is still kind of bleeding some stuff over into the signal that you're getting into the guitar. Um, this is not a ground plate, um, as in the wiper in here is not a ground plate. The back of the potentiometer is definitely like a, a grounded surface. You're not going to hear anything from that, but you may hear stuff coming from here. Like if you ever listen to a, a, a tone pot that's dirty, you can still hear it crackling. There's still something coming back through that and going into your hot, which is why this, or, this thing here will still tend to want to pick up some noise or add some noise to the signal. Again, when you shield it, you'll get less of that, which is why you want that orientation to be correct which is why these capacitors were designed the way that they were. So when you go in to install your orange drops and get that sweet, cool orange drop tone, um, this is something that you should definitely keep in mind. So this has been Drew Jones of Drew's Guitar Shop in Seattle, Washington. I have a link to my Ko-Fi and, um, and my Patreon in the description of the video, and if you feel like kicking me a few bucks, I'd really appreciate it. Um, and uh, I also have a link down there to my web page, and you can find my contact information and prices and everything there. Um, if you happen to be in the Seattle area in need of repair, I'd definitely love to hear from you. I always love getting new work in, especially if it's really cool, weird stuff. Um, anyway, thank you for watching. Have a great one.